Which oh, one is it? Oh. We're not there yet, are we? I thought we were, we're just moving through this. Carry on, we'll do the land management. Land management. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yes. if that's the end of the money thing, can we have a quick discussion on this issue of contingency fund? And I've got to advise, I'm going to, have to go very shortly after 4 o'clock. Yes, yeah, we're going to do, we've got to do all those things. Um, I suggest we just keep going through the, the book, and we're getting close to the end. I think. Well, when will I have an opportunity to raise the issue of contingency uh, Well, let's funding? just, uh, seeing that's a new piece, let's let's do the stuff first. All right. If I have to go, I have to go. I'll raise it for the council meeting at the end of the month. Uh, land management on page 24. Yeah, just uh, I'll quickly run through that a whole range of issues um, raised. Probably, I mean the. The, uh, we have a land management team now. We have um, a subsidy scheme, effectively called the Regional Land Care Scheme, which they can uh, they form part part of their work program. Um, and uh, other than um, probably Mr. Bailey's um, issue raised and dealt with under item four on page 25. Um, yes, there are some potential implications uh, once we know the Board of Inquiry decision on Plan Change 6, um, but we can't determine those until we actually receive that submission uh, or that decision. Um, the um, land management team generally bring an operational plan for the coming year to Council, um, and we have made the decision just to postpone that and probably till the August Environment Services Committee um, so that we are able to take into account that Board of Inquiry decision once it do does come. So that will form part of the operational plan and um, there will be a clear sort of program of work for the coming financial year from that um, where I expect most of the issues raised will be dealt with. Okay, questions on that, Councillor Bell. <coughs> just ex expanding that just a bit you know, on Mr. Bailey's point in number four here. If if what what is the process if the Board of Inquiry decision stands and there's a plan there for information somewhere uh, here in the building to cope with that, how, whatever that financial implication is, uh, more staff, more whatever it is required to do so. How does that get put before us as a budget matter for this fiscal year, or does it, or what it Probably happens? won't come before you for this fiscal year. We've, um, uh, I guess, reflected what we anticipate we might need for this coming financial year. The bulk of it, or the, yeah, the, the heavy lifting would have to be done through the long-term plan discussion and, uh, and looking at, um, you know, the longer-term implications as mm. part of that process. Councillor Scott. Just a query about Cadmium, as always, raises the head every annual plan. Um, we do report on those um, monitoring the land science program gets reported on, doesn't <coughs> it? Um, we haven't reported land science recently, but we did produce a specific regional based Cadmium report about uh, three years ago. Um, and that, if I recall correctly, it was due for review on a, on a five year cycle if I recall correctly. Uh -huh. but, but, and that, but that report's available on the website? It is. In, in the, um, yes, the land science, particularly the soil quality monitoring program, once it's, we have enough information to report, will be reported back through, probably through the SOE type reporting. Well, I'm happy to leave no change. To the plan, okay. Seconder for that, you have to second that, Councillor Bevan. Further discussion? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you. Put that motion. Then all those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, no. Carried. All right, let's keep on, keep tracking. Oil and gas. Yep, um, so, yeah, sorry, I'd, I hadn't written this. Gavin, I had written it. Um, but perhaps just moving through. Um, clarification that uh, moratoria was sought. Um, the council can't just impose moratoria. 
uh, there is a legislative process that has to be got, worked through, and I think we had a discussion around that in regards to uh, coastal consent. So it's a similar type thing. We can't just simply impose moratoria. Um, some discussion there around the need for a strategy, and we had we certainly had mixed views yesterday from submitters on that. Um, <clears throat> probably the other point just to make in s number five is that we didn't have the benefit of the PC report at the time this was written. Um, we still haven't had the opportunity to review it thoroughly, but we would do that and probably bring back that um, review to, to uh, council at some stage in August, probably to Environment and Services Committee, um, to, to consider the implication of the PC report. Um, which which covers off that. So. And do you just want to cover off very briefly um, what the main recommendation that affects regional councils was out of that PC report? It was really around recommending changes to regional plans. It, it was. And so this council had resolved to um, uh, pursue a plan change if the PC highlighted matters that weren't adequately um, covered in our regional plan. And it's, she certainly has pointed out some areas that a plan change could be considered, but we'd need to more thoroughly sort of consider that and bring back some recommendations to Council. Just one other point then, um, if it is uh, going to require a regional plan change, it'll go to the Regional Planning Committee, not the ENS. Just, right. just, yeah. Did that, um, did that get you where you needed to be? I'm going to... Um, Move a recommendation at whatever, but if there's more questioning first. Yeah, you've indicated that. Sorry, Councillor Beale. Uh, yeah, just in the light of what you said, and I note number five on page 27, staff do not consider any new information that's become available. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. At the time, we we wrote these about two weeks ago just right. to, to get them written and get them out the door to you. Oh, we didn't have you. the benefit <laughs> of the PC report, which only came out one o'clock yesterday. Oh, that's right. So we're, we're catching up on that. So we will bring a review back to the RPC, sorry, not the ENS committee, in terms of implications of the of the PC's report in light of this council's position on on considering that uh, that report and then deciding whether ch a plan change was required. Okay. Uh, can I just ask another question? Um, so what happens if somebody, so we're, we're now in the throes of, of digesting that report and Correct. deciding how we should respond to it and what modifications we should make to our own um, plan as a consequence. What happens if in the meantime somebody stumps up to us with a resource consent application to, to mine? We, we consider it and process it under the existing regional plan. And, so, and, and for clarity we have received and just accepted um, a consent from uh, TAG Corporation yesterday for their initial site establishment at Boar Hill. So does the fact that we've got to consider it under our existing plan preclude us from considering this new information? No, it doesn't preclude us from considering new information, but we would consider the application under our existing policy and rule framework in the plan. So we, we, we're not in a position of changing anything in the regional plan. Councillor Scott. And yesterday one of the submitters raised a matter about um, the fact that Hawke's Bay Regional Council did nothing to exclude the aquifers from um, the um, expiration permits in spite of the fact that we had passed a resolution at Council to, to do so. That was um, submitter number 22, um, Ms Pauline Doyle. Can um, we have clarification about that please? So um, two points. One is we have submitted under block offer 14 2014 to exclude aquifers that were originally proposed under that uh, permit process that um, New Zealand Petroleum and Minerals run uh, who are a subsidiary or a, a, a department if you like of Ministry of Business Innovation and Employment and they did hear our submission and they removed um, the Rotanifa um, aquifer from, from that original block offer. The matter that was raised yesterday, there's obviously some, some confusion there. That was subject to a, a permit application from August 2011, um, which was granted in November 2012. It was issued under what they called the old priority and time process, uh, where no consultation was required with, with councils or local government. Uh, there was some consultation with iwi. Um, so there wasn't any requirement for them to consult with councils and we didn't have the opportunity to provide a submission. 
Chief Chair, I'm sorry, question? I've just got one more question, yeah, um, sure. and it's in relation to what you've just informed us about an application having been now received and having to be considered under the under the existing um, rules plan. Um, what delegated authority has this council given to staff to deal with that consent, and what opportunity do council have for input into that application? So the, the, the delegation sits with staff um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's about the sum of it really. So we, we, we have the delegation, so the delegation sit in my group um, to, to process and deal with the consent. If a, if a hearing is required, uh, that, that would go back to the chair of the hearings committee and the council uh, would, uh, would convene a hearing. But otherwise, the, if the consent was, uh, was issued without requirement for he a hearing, then that process would be managed and run by staff. Question, just for clarity, I think I know the answer. But what would be the circumstances that you would envisage this decision would be made by the staff, and where would the bright line be that you would then forward the decision to the hearings committee? It would go to a hearings committee if it was a consent that was notified and there were submissions received in opposition to the application and a hearing was required and a hearing hearings panel would be convened by the chair of the hearings committee. Supplementary question. What would require the application to be notified as opposed to non-notified? Um, the details of notification requirement are in the regional plan. Um, but, but in essence, it's a lot. Uh, effects more than minor um, is, is the general the catch no, Where Are the effects of the activity likely to be more than minor? It's those sorts of assessments. There are thresholds and assessments, both in legislation and the Act, and guidance is, is, exists in our regional plan around when notification may be required. In this instance, a, a ball permit is a controlled activity, so the Council must issue the consent. Um, there are a range of other associated consents that may be required for things like stormwater management, sediment control. Um, if they, they submit a consent to include hydraulic fracturing, there would be a discharge to land consent, which is a discretionary activity, and Council can exercise some discretion over that. But for a, a straight bore permit, a hole in the ground, it's a controlled activity. As long as they meet the standards, conditions and terms in the, in the plan, consent must be issued. Further supplementary, <clears throat> if it is hydraulic fracturing and there's a discharge onto the land, it, therefore we have some issue. But what if it's hydraulic fracturing and the discharge from the activity is going to uh, uh, go through uh, the layers of rock and, and uh, you know, the underlying structures? Do they then have to apply for consent for that? So if, if they're proposing hydraulic fracturing, they would need a resource consent irrespective. Both ways. So I just want to, the way you said yeah. to me before, it sounded like Sorry. it's just on the land. No, no. I was thinking, well, the so, the service we need to know as well. Yeah, Thank so, you. so they have to manage their activities on the top side, yep. so, so stormwater, sediment, yep. um, those types of things, a spill plan, contingency for dealing with spills on the surface, those sorts of things. If they wanted to fracture or stimulate the well, that would require a discharge to land and a separate consent for that would be required. So drilling for water or drilling for oil or gas, same thing? The plan doesn't differentiate. We doesn't treat them as the same thing. Under the, um, following this report, once you've had a look at it, is there a possibility that that might have to change? In other words, the regional plan will have to be changed? It's certainly a possibility. I mean, there's a range of things that, that could, could be changed um, coming out of the PC's report. I mean, and, and I'd say that, look, reading her report, there's some very useful um, stuff on there that would be... Um, sensibly considered. So, yes. Uh, just supplementary on that. So, does that information? Do you use that as staff in in the decision that you make, which is delegated to you? Do you use that information from that report at all in your decision making? Yes, so we're free to use whatever information we wish. Um, so we could commission further work. Uh, the applicant typically provides an assessment of effects, which includes all of the information they feel we need to process the consent, we can conf commission further work as we see fit to fully inform us on the effects of the activity um, to, to make a determination. 
and we can draw on any information we wish, including the PCE's report. Further questions? Councillor Balfour, do you wish to move a recommendation? Yeah, I do have a recommendation, which uh, you want me to read that first? I think it's, it's about to be brought up, I think. Oh, is this by tele telepathy or? Yeah, and, I, and I'm raising it in the form I am only because it, it potentially, um, as I said earlier this afternoon, um, I'm feeling that it might have uh, dollar implications and I could be dissuaded of that by the staff, in, in which case this conversation could occur elsewhere. But this last exchange that's occurred, uh, uh, if I could just read a few sentences from the commissioner's report, which I... Yep, I'm sorry. It's point seven. X million. I'm waiting. It's like X million. That's more than hundred million. That's that's. I'm I'm about to I'm about to defer to more expert uh, counsel on that number if there if there needs to be a number. But I want to get the point on the table here uh, as to uh, why I think we should be making sure we have this capacity available to us in the immediate uh, next few months. So if I could speak to my... Are you happy to second that, Councillor Graham? Uh, the, the commissioner did speak uh, 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 specifically to regional councils and even more specifically to uh, the Hawks Bay situation. And uh, some of this bears directly on the questions that have been raised. And I'll just read a few sentences. Because the drilling of an oil and gas well in these regions, and she's spe specifically referring to Hawke's Bay, among others, is a controlled activity, councils cannot decline applications if they meet the conditions in the plan. This means that the ability of councils to consider the location of wells is limited. In regional plans, the drilling of an oil and gas well should be classified as a discretionary activity. This would enable councils to retain the right of, of declining applications, consider all relevant environmental effects, and impose conditions appropriate to the location. In developing their plans, regional councils should also consider whether they need to prohibit drilling for oil and gas in particular areas. One reason for such a prohibition might be, might be the need to protect certain aquifers. The Ruatanifa and Haratunga aquifers in Hawke's Bay are not protected in this way, despite popular belief. Councils should make explicit in their plans the circumstances when consents will be publicly notified and when they, when they will not be. And, and so she then refers to a set of, she moves on to a set of recommendations which are equally brief. Um, I recommend that, this is her speaking. Regional councils review the objectives and rules in their plans that are relevant to the oil and gas industry and classify drilling and oil and gas well fracking and waste disposal methods as discretionary activities, identify areas where oil and gas drilling can take place and where it cannot, set out core requirements for environmental monitoring, require applications for consents for establishing well sites and for drilling wells to be bundled together, make explicit the circumstances when consents will be publicly notified and when they will not be, hold joint hearings with district councils whenever possible, and finally, identify and plan for the cumulative effects of an industry that may expand very rapidly. So the, that's the, the summation of, of what is interspersed throughout uh, the report as, as the responsibilities that she feels regional councils should take. And earlier on in the report, she notes that while she's made recommendations as far as legislative activity to create some broader umbrella for this, that that should not deter, in fact, she would say the opposite, it, it should uh, not deter uh, uh, regional councils from proceeding to basically protect their own butts uh, is, is the gist of it. So in view of that, um, I guess my, my view is that this is something that we should not uh, delay in, in getting on top of. And I, the spirit of this uh, 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 motion is simply to uh, put us on record as saying we recognize uh, the significance of uh, the, uh, the charge that's just been given here. Of course, we're free to debate whether oil and gas drilling should occur at all or and all the rest of it, uh, or whether we believe the parliamentary commissioner knows what she's talking about. But assuming she does know what she's talking about, then I would suggest we need to be willing to get on with this, and, and I would like to make sure uh, that we have the resources in the coming year to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Seeing 
I'm very pleased to second this. Firstly, I'm incredibly impressed that Councillor Balfour has his head round this report that was only released um, um, in the last 24 hours. Um, but clearly uh, we have been given a window of opportunity to control our own destiny on this issue, and we should grab it with two hands. That's all I have to say on the matter. Question. Other speakers? Question. Uh, we really need to put a money figure on this. What is it likely to be? Well, the entire budget for the planned development program for next year is $1.7 million, including, obviously that includes a fair bit of external expenditure, in fact, mostly external expenditure. Um, it would really depend on... Um, how wide do you want to take the consultation? You know, given the discussion that's already been held uh, today around public engagement, how broadly do you go? Uh, that's the first. That would be the first thing. The second thing would be, do you reprioritise the plan changes that are in the current annual plan and bump some down the list to, to bring this in, or is this an additional expen expense? Um, look, I, in some ways, you know, what's been read out is actually quite clear cut from the from the, the PCU. She's been quite good. She said your class is as discretionary. So there goes the ability to consult on that, for example. But um, there will be a lot you know, a fair bit of information I'd expect that we would need to find to support, support couple of hundred. That. Couple of hundred thousand. Could could I just add a slight complication on there? The PCU was also pretty clear in her report that having Differing uh, policy and rule frameworks between neighbouring regions is nonsensical, mm. um, and I've already talked to my my counterparts in my neighbouring regions about coming together and dealing with this strategically across all of the east coast, because it doesn't make sense to me that we do that. That we, we that we would do that in isolation of our counterparts. So, you know, this process could, you know, in terms of the consultation part, be be quite big to start with. If we said we want to take the conversation wider get the whole East Coast community involved so that we came up with a common approach. Um, so consultation could be important at the front end to get a, a smoother bit at the back end, and it's likely to take more than one annual plan cycle, I would suggest. Right. I'll say $100,000 so 100, in this year's plan to kick, kick start it, and I would make the suggestion that it's funded uh, by a reallocation from the unspent portion of, of the Open Spaces Fund. And I say that because I'm going in, in a minute um, because I think we've done pretty much as much as we need to do with open spaces. Um, and clearly there's, there's public um, priority on this one and I think there's priority around the council. So I offer you that little solution. Other speakers? Councillor no, Scott. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr Chairman, because... Uh, there was no chance to ask questions around this. May we ask questions? Um, I know we went through a full range of questions. I went, I went up and down and back before I came back to Councillor Belford. True. Yeah. But what, um, what sorry, is the question? I had no idea that this this was going to be the motion. Neither did I. Yeah. So Very well. I won't ask a question. I'll have, sorry. Um, you, I'll you, speak then, and I'll have to vote against it because I believe that the Parliamentary Commissioners for the Environment raised issues around national policy statements, uniformity throughout the country. At this stage, we cannot put a figure on this. Mm. It is as totally um, impractical to build it in. And um, if anyone thinks that a plane change is going to occur within the next days, weeks, months possibly years. It, it takes time and therefore I do think we will be um, expecting the staff to bring a paper to the next RPC outlining a work program on this and I presume that the initial stages of it will be met from existing budgets. Other speakers? Councillor Barker. <coughs> I will speak uh, firmly in support of this. Uh, I will oppose any increase in expenditure unless it's clearly within what is our core business. And the core business is a regulator, and the second part of our core business is communi communicating with our community. Our community is really, really interested in this subject, very interested. And if we want 
to be a leader of our community, we have to lead. Uh, I was attended the, uh, <clears throat> the seminar at Hastings uh, beginning of last, end of last year. I was really surprised at the turnout. I was really surprised at how engaged people were, and I thought that was a start. Uh, I think this is an issue that people are really keen on, and I think we need to put <clears throat> uh, our best foot forward. Yes, there will be some technical issues, as highlighted by Councillor Scott, about plans, about timing, and so on. But we can't let we, we have to work around those as best as we can. So this council leads the discussion. If we do not lead the discussion, others will, and we'll fall behind, and therefore we will not be seen as relevant. If we're going to be relevant, we need to lead the debate, and this is a very, very important debate. So I would just want to say I support it for all the reasons that have been put out there, and I, I think uh, uh, I'd like like Councillor Dick to have a few. Uh, for a bit more specificity here. Oh, I've got 200,000. Yeah, I'm. You know, whatever, whatever it takes to do it, I'm supportive. It's, we can do it with 200,000. I'd be happy with that. Can I just clarify one thing, please. Um, that open spaces budget is loaned. It's not actually. Um, no funds there's no funds there. It's actually uh, loan provision money. However, however, there is provision in existing budgets to repay that loan. It's been provided for in. <coughs> the um, leasehold uh, income, so it's not going to be an extra net cost. Councillor Hewitt. I express some dissatisfaction to you at afternoon tea time, um, Mr Chairman, around what I considered to be um, things going a bit slowly. I thought we should be getting on with things and you explained to me this is politics, you know, it takes time. So, so in this instance, I, I'm looking for a bit of time. I, I, I heard the, the Parliamentary Commissioner report on the national, national programme as I was driving home last night. I'm looking forward to the staff response on this. But in terms of leaping forward and having this motion up without having the ability to hear the staff's feedback and get an informed recommendation and all of a sudden we've got an open spaces and a and a $200,000 figure plucked out of the air and no opportunity for questions, I find that um, it goes against the, this is politics, it takes time. And um, so I will be voting against, not because I disagree with the sentiment, but I do need more information. I also speak against it. I mean, if this is not a hair trigger reaction, to chuck a couple of hundred thousand at something, we're not even sure what the heck it is yet, uh, I don't know what is. I mean, this is... We need to provide leadership to this region. Leadership is is um, about being uh, informed, about taking people with you, about understanding the issues fully. 27 hours ago a report was released. Our staff don't even know the full implications of it yet. It talks specifically about some Hawke's Bay issues. That's great. In fact, I think that's, um, that's a huge plus of that report. But to leap out now, front page of the paper tomorrow, Regional councils have decided over a cup of tea and 27 hours of um, digesting, I haven't even seen the report yet, to, to allocate $200,000 to what they don't know yet, uh, I think is jolly ridiculous, actually, and I firmly speak against this. Yeah, Mr Chairman, I, you've stolen a lot of the words. I was just thinking the same thing, that we're rushing into this at this particular stage. This, this is about oil and gas. Um, it's not just about fracking. Um, it's a lot more, and I think, as uh, Mr. Maxwell pointed out, you know, this should be a, this should be something that the whole of the East Coast is looking at. And I guess the PC has also indicated in her report that you know that, that there should be more of a, a national approach to this as well. You know, across the across the country. So, I think that um, I don't think we are. I think we're rushing into this at this stage. <laughs> I'm not trying to lessen the importance of this discussion. Uh, it has to be had, but I don't think we can just make this decision today. I think I want to hear, like others do, I want to hear the reports from, uh, from uh, staff on this one, and I presume that we'll get that report, or we get it prior to the uh, RPC meeting, maybe. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'll support the motion. Um, the only part I'm not 100% sure about is the, the, the dollar amount and where it's going to come from. But um, to suggest that we're rushing into this, um, it's for heaven's sake, it's a consultation uh, with the public and um, the possibility of leading to a plan change. It's a, 
Uh, we've got a really important report they've been waiting for an awfully long time to receive. Um, it's, a, it's clearly a matter of considerable concern and interest to our constituency here in Hawke's Bay, and for us to show some leadership and move on it now is a real positive, and I will support it. You've already spoken, Councillor. No, Bill. I haven't. Yes, you have. I've, I've, made, I've made some suggestions. I haven't spoken to the motion. Well, that was that was your opportunity. I would have thought we'll be here till seven o'clock. Well, I won't be. Well, I'll, I'll be more than happy to hear Councillor. Okay, Councillor. Dick. Right. Look, I see that from yesterday we have an additional task, and at this stage we are making provision for dealing with what we have to deal with over the next 12 months. Now, I don't, I'm don't. i not supporting the notion that we go out next week or the week after the annual plan is adopted and go into a great uh, public consultation process. Um, it needs to be done in, in an orderly and well-informed way, but if there's a, another job to do, then I'm sorry, we, we, we either don't do it or we do it, and if we do it, we've got to make some, some pr pr financial provision. Now, okay, we're plucking figures out of the air, but um, they're not necessarily going to be spent in their quantum um, until the matter is more clearly defined. But unless there's something there, as we go into the next um, annual plan period, then we're hamstrung. We can't react um, in the way that we should do to something that is of, of significant interest and importance to our ratepayers and people of this region, if not New Zealand. So I support it, uh, max 200k, and um, I would hope there would be a resolution following to, if it's passed, uh, to make that allocation from uh, an available source being um, the, uh, the Open Spaces Policy Fund, which will have no, uh, no rating, additional rating implication. Move it, Mr. Summit. Yes, as I said, my, my interest in putting this forward was to uh, see this council be proactive in uh, getting ahead of this issue. Uh, uh, the commissioner's report is very clear about this being a two-level, this being an issue that requires a two-level approach, that uh, there will be national things that need to be done in the interest of consistency and so forth. Uh, but there are plenty of other things that she has clearly identified fall within the uh, scope of, of regional plans and regional mm -hmm. council responsibility. So as I preface my remark, whether it's 200,000, 100,000, uh, the, 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 the principle from my standpoint is that uh, I don't want us to be in a situation in the next uh, fiscal year where uh, because we've put this at the bottom of the list because of no resources, uh, we are dragging our feet on this. Uh, we should be out in front of it. Uh, and uh, uh, I'd be perfectly happy to see the dollar amount struck when, when we come back. Uh, 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 if, if people need to give more thought to what, the dollar, what a, an appropriate dollar amount would be or where it would come from, uh, that's something that could be uh, uh, inserted, if you will, when we come back uh, at the end of the month to adopt the budget. Uh, I don't, I don't think the real issue here is whether it's 150 or 200. Uh, the real issue is the principle of us going on record that uh, the, we can study this over the next two weeks, next three weeks, whatever. The, the report is the report. Uh, and unless we want to consciously choose to ignore these recommendations, which I think have been pretty carefully arrived at, uh, we should be preparing ourselves and committing ourselves to our public I don't care about what Gisborne does. Uh, I'm here representing Hawke's Bay, where there, as you say, are permits uh, now uh, or, or applications uh, are being filed, and that was also noted in her report. Uh, and uh, we need to get ahead of this. Uh, and uh, this is an expression simply of that, that we recognize we need to get ahead of it, and we're prepared to resource accordingly to do so uh, in the coming year. Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, uh, please raise your hand. I'm calling for division, obviously. And against. Oh, sorry, have we got that? And against. Can I 
Motion's carried. Very good. Okay.